Alrighty gang, Milton is a very serious storm. Let's jump right in with the biggest hazard, surge. We only have 48 hours or less before a five to 10 foot surge, a very dangerous one, arrives on the west coast of Florida, locally up to about 12 feet. Everybody in the pink now has a storm surge watch in effect. We also have a hurricane watch in effect too. Surge will be the biggest issue with Milton. Some neighborhoods might be isolated, cut off, or underwater. I'm also expecting a few gusts of 90 to 100 miles per hour at the media coastline. Farther inland, widespread gusts of 70 to 80 miles per hour, so widespread power outages are likely too. That means if Mima needs electricity, if somebody needs electricity for health devices, invite them over ahead of time and make plans now rather than scrambling during or after the storm. It's also pouring right now across much of central and south Florida thanks to moisture streaming east ahead of Milton. So three to five inches before the storm even gets here, then Milton will dump another four to eight inches so some localized flooding is possible. If you haven't already, follow me on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the whole nine yards. For more updates, I'll be flying down in about 24 hours and follow my radar across the board on all social media platforms too. So a few things, Milton, high in category four right now, almost a cat five. It'll be a cat five by probably shortly after lunchtime today. It is a mean storm. It's roiling with thunderstorms and to the point where the eye wall has something called an enveloped eye wall lightning signature. Basically, we don't normally get lightning in eye walls unless the storm is really strengthening fast and it still has that signature of lightning all around the eye. Now, the storm central pressure dropped about three and a half percent in four hours time. That's basically like 1% per hour. What that means doesn't sound like much, but what that means is that you're literally vacuuming 1% of all the atmosphere's air up and out the middle of the storm every hour, which is an incredible amount of work attesting to how powerful Milton is. And that missing air in the middle, that vacuum effect, is what spurs the strong inward winds. Uh, simply stated, that's the fastest intensification I personally can remember in the Gulf of Mexico doing this job for a number of years. And here's one more shot of all the lightning surrounding the eye, again, still strengthening. The crazy part, the hurricane hunters even found hail coming in the northwest eye wall. So suffice to say, we'll likely have a category five by this afternoon or evening in the Gulf of Mexico, north of the Yucatan. So what's next? Well, the storm has been trending a little farther south of forecast, meaning a closer shave to the Yucatan. But that also means if we start off a little more southerly, the hurricane center is adjusting their forecast track for landfall a little more to the south as well. But Tampa is still in the cone, could be directly hit. So could Fort Myers or Naples, Sarasota, anywhere in that zone. And the important thing to remember too is that little shifts in track, five, 10 miles north or south, will have all the bearing on surge impacts because the surge is mainly south of the center with the onshore winds. So if the eye goes 10 miles north, the surge lifts 10 miles north. If it goes 10 miles south, it goes 10 miles south. It's a big deal. Now, even though the track is technically south of Tampa right now, all four major hurricane models simulate a track near or north of Tampa, which would give Tampa Bay a historic and very dangerous storm surge of up to 10 to 12 feet. So if you're in Tampa Bay, you need to be taking this one seriously. Plan for the worst, hope for the best. What you need to be doing right now is making sure that if you're within 10 feet of sea level, you can get out of Dodge because there could be a very serious surge. Tampa, Fort Myers, Naples, Punta Gorda, Sarasota, any of y'all have a plan now. Now the only saving grace is that this storm will be weakening a little bit as it approaches landfall. It won't be a cat five, it'll probably be a cat two or three for two reasons. Number one, dry air working into the circulation will kind of erode it from the inside out a little bit. And number two, disruptive upper level winds might try to knock the storm off kilter. Now you might think, wow, that's a good thing, a weakening storm. Not exactly. Sure, it'll still be a cat two or three. It won't be a five, but a cat two or three is mean, believe me. And number two, as the storm weakens, it expands. It's like the ice skater when she's spinning, she throws out her arms and traces bigger circles, albeit slightly slower. That means a broader area of the ocean surface will get the winds, meaning we can pile more water against the coast and actually get a bigger storm surge. Please take this one seriously. I'm in, uh, where am I right now? Not Alaska, Canada. I'm in Canada right now. I'm flying down to Florida tomorrow. I'll be there. We might have a live show in the evening. Stay tuned for updates. Believe me, I'll be there, you'll be there. We'll be there together every step of the way. I promise that. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa and Windows.